everyone, Lou here. As many of you still love my Black Butler reviews, and November being my self-indulgent month, let's take a look at the OVA for one of my favorite Black Butler story arcs, the Murder Mystery Arc. Roll the intro and let's get started. <laughs> Production-wise, there isn't much to say. It was announced the OVA would be appearing in the Blu-ray release of Book of Circus as a promotion, which Black Butler is no stranger to OVAs coming with the DVD release of the anime. Let me know down below if you guys want a review for the OVAs, by the way, since we're kinda coming up to a Black Butler drought since the school arc hasn't been announced yet. Anyway. It was directed by Abe Noriyuki, who directed Bleach, the Yu Yu Hakusho movie, Book of Circus, and was an episode director for Naruto Shibuden. This is a two-part OVA, with the first one releasing January 28th, 2015, and part two releasing February 25th, 2015. The murder mystery arc is a mixed basket for Black Butler fans, as it is technically filler, but for me, it's one of my favorite arcs in all of Black Butler. Why is that? Let's get our magnifying glasses to start with the story. If you guys remember from the previous review, if not, I highly recommend watching my Book of Circus review before watching this one, Ciel was told to investigate a circus kidnapping children. One hijink led to another, and it turns out all the children there were brain dead. Rather than force these children to live their lives in a suffering vegetative state, Seal burned down the mansion where they were imprisoned in, which killed all the children inside. Outside to witness this burning was the Queen's secretaries, Charles Gray and Charles Phillips. About a month or so after the events of the circus arc, the Double Charles, as the fans call them, asked Ciel to host a party with a guest the Queen asked for. He's suspicious that they need a confession out of him or something more, so as punishment for lying to the Queen, Ciel has to host this dinner party. Invited to the party is your standard Victorian murder mystery cast. An actress, jeweler, shipping company manager, and so on. Invited as well is a man by the name of Arthur Conan Doyle. Despite being a dentist and an author who had only ever published one book, CL read A Study in Scarlet and liked it so much that he wanted to help inspire him to write more. What I really like about this OVA is showing how kind, albeit in an unorthodox way, CL is to people he likes. It shows that behind being the noble of evil, there is still a good kid in there. As all the guests gather around and general character setup starts, including the guests the queen asked CL to learn about being a drunken pervert, the story shifts to Arthur's perspective. He watches Ciel and Sebastian speak to each other in French in order to avoid other people hearing about them take talking massive shit and business with this guest. As Ciel goes to bed and the night ticks on, the guest of honor rings for a servant to come down. For those who don't know, by the way, Victorian mansions had a small device in the room that would connect down to the kitchen where a bell would ring when the person needed something. The servants all come to the door because he's a massive pervert so they want to protect Mei Rin. They hear a dying groan and a crash through the door. Shocking as it is, the man is dead. There's a wound in his chest and the room he was murdered in was locked from the inside. Here we start the murder mystery. Now for this video, I won't spoil who did it. Why? Because I genuinely loved how well executed the twists were, and I want everyone to be just as surprised as I was when I first read the manga version of this arc. I will spoil that the arc ends with Snake being captured and CL lies to him about the fate of the circus crew and takes him aboard as the Phantom High footman. After Joker and the others were killed, the circus kind of went under and Snake wanted to know what happened to his family. He tried to kill Ciel, but instead Ciel offers him with a new family at the Phantom Hive Manor. He agrees and now Snake becomes, as I said, the footman for the Phantom Hive Manor, which we'll see more of him in the next arc. What I do find very interesting is the anime's perspective of switching the narrator from open to interpretation to Arthur in his old age telling this. That's actually really cool. I really liked it. Overall, without spoiling a thing, this OVA is one of my favorite arcs in all of Black Butler, as I stated earlier. 
Murder, mystery, and true crime are my favorite genres of media. I love a classic whodunit in the style of one of my favorite movies like Murder on the Orient Express. Though you have to admit, it's kind of hilarious that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, in the canon of Black Butler, based Sherlock Holmes off of Sebastian's character, when in real life, Yana Toboso apparently based part of Sebastian's personality off a particular interpretation of Sherlock Holmes from the 60s. So that's pretty funny to me. Though I guess to everyone who likes to fan cast Benedict Cumberpatch as Sebastian, it's a happy day, I guess. <laughs> I will say the animation, color-wise, is a little lackluster compared to the colorful circus arc. That's to be expected, because this is a somber murder arc. Who the hell is expecting bright cheery colors when someone was just stabbed to death in the room? There's also a massive storm outside during this arc, so it makes sense the color scheme would look a bit dull and sad. Rain in England? That's like peak angst vibes right there. I've seen those aesthetic Tumblr posts. Anyway, the animation itself was a lot better than the circus arc. Things look a lot cleaner, that's to be expected as this is a two-part OVA, so the budget and timing to make it was likely longer than it would be for a TV series for an anime. Usually OVAs are supposed to look better than their TV airings. Now, I did give some negative points for the bloom effect during the circus arc, but I think they finally found their footing with this arc. It makes sense, since this entire arc takes place indoors, so they finally got the hang of how to make the bloom effect look a lot more appealing this time around. Animation here in general wasn't crazy, since Sebastian himself isn't doing anything too crazy this time. Overall, the animation was pretty good, and a step up from the circus arc. Though trust me, we'll see this animation get even better with the luxury liner arc. Now my thoughts on Sebastian and Ciel remain the same during this arc. I'd just be repeating myself if I did it again, so I highly recommend checking out my review of the circus arc if we need a refresher or if you're new here. Anyway, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle as a character was very interesting to me. To be honest, I do prefer the manga's approach where we didn't know he was Sir Arthur until the very end where it's a surprise, but that's just me being nitpicky for a second. Anyway. Now, his personality in the anime is different compared to real life. The real life author of Sherlock Holmes was apparently very complex and an advocate for social justice back then. Not sure with the details because I didn't want to spend hours researching that. To justify that drastic shift in personality for the anime, you could say that this was when he was a newly published author, so the confidence and maturity hadn't come in for him yet. I guess. I like him here though, Arthur was just adorable this arc, and a really neat look at what Sebastian and Ciel look like to an outside perspective. Snake is a character I didn't mention much from the previous story, that's because he's going to shine the most in the luxury liner arc, but even then he's still a minor character. I do like him though, I think he's a very unique character in the first place. He speaks for his snakes, and I like that the dub and original Japanese dialogue gives him different voices for the snakes. Fun fact, all his snakes are named after famous authors of the Victorian era and earlier. Charles Gray is a character I actually really like, but I think he's just a hard character to figure out. Outside of this arc, he doesn't appear much after, so we don't really get a good feel for his character. Though fun fact, he is based off a real person. Charles Gray was a famous real Earl who was Prime Minister of England in the 1830s. Yes, by the way, the famous Earl Grey tea was named after him, which is actually my favorite type of tea. Though unlike Arthur where he is that person, Charles is more loosely based off the Earl because the real life Earl actually died long before Black Butler even starts. Not sure why Yana named him after this person or what purpose that serves later, but I do think he's cool. I'd say Charles Grey is all the positive parts of Ash Landers from season 1. I also like that he has a food addiction because that's a mood. That's it to be honest, my thoughts on the servants are the same and the minor characters don't really do much because they're just suspects and victims throughout this arc, so it really isn't anything to say. As for Charles Phillips, he literally never speaks, but I think he's just adorable, so that's pretty much it. 
If you love a damn good murder mystery in the style of Murder on the Orient Express, Sherlock Holmes, and the board game Clue, I highly recommend this OVA. I really don't want to spoil a thing for anybody, but I will say that going in blind is honestly the best way to enjoy this OVA, as with all murder mysteries. To me, I find this is peak Black Butler. Supernatural elements, real-world Victorian-era references, and an excellent mystery to solve. Yes, it's filler and honestly could be skipped if you want major stories only, but I think this was just way too good to be skipped. This will always be my favorite arc in all of Black Butler, the Luxury Liner arc being a close second. Fun fact, that's up next! It'll likely be the last Black Butler thing I review for a while because the school arc has still not been announced, so please let me know down below if you'd like me to go back and review the other OVAs for the Black Butler as we all wait for the school arc. Or not because Yana is too busy with Twisted Wonderland. Anyway, that'll be it for this video. Let me know down below what you guys think. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! If any of you would like to help support my channel in any possible way, my Ko-fi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!